Hi, my name is Justin Umtham and welcome to North American TV. As I'm sure you already know, there's a lot at stake when moving. Your valuable possessions, memories, and the money that you'll be spending all come to mind when planning your big day. While most moves go smoothly, accidents do occur where items may be lost or damaged. While the moving company is liable for those lost or damaged goods, there are different levels of liability related to your mover. You choose the level of liability by selecting a valuation coverage. In this video, we will outline different valuation options as well as some action items that may limit your mover's liability. So what are your options when it comes to valuation and limiting your mover's liability? Well, you have two. The first option known as full value protection. If you opt for full value protection, your mover is responsible for the replacement value of lost or damaged items that are unable to be repaired. This means that if any item is lost or damaged during the moving process, your mover will offer to do one of the following for each item. Number one, repair the item. Number two, replace with a similar item. Or number three, make a cash settlement for the cost of repair or the current market replacement value. It's important to know that under this option, movers limit their liability to damaged or lost articles of extraordinary value. Unless you notify the mover in writing on the shipping documents of each high value item, an article of extraordinary value is one that exceeds $100 per pound. If you want to go with a less comprehensive liability coverage, you can choose the second option, known as released value. Although this coverage is offered at no expense, its protection is minimal. Under this option, the mover is only liable for no more than 60 cents per pound per article. Therefore, you are only compensated based on the weight of your item and not its value. It's crucial to note that if you do not waive full value coverage, federal regulations require the mover to provide full value protection and you will be billed for the amount of that coverage. So now that you know about your two coverage options, it's time to discuss some actions that may help limit your mover's liability. Action number one, packing dangerous, perishable, or hazardous items without your mover's knowledge. Packing items that fall under these categories are ultimately your responsibility and are not covered under any type of valuation coverage. Be sure to check with your moving company if you're not clear what constitutes a dangerous, perishable, or hazardous item. Action number two, packing your own boxes. If you don't pack them correctly and your items end up broken, it'll be harder to establish a claim against the mover. If you insist on packing your own boxes, make sure you do some research on how to properly pack items, especially unusually shaped and fragile items. You should also purchase new boxes appropriate for the items to be packed and note any damaged boxes on the delivery documents in order to establish the mover's liability. Action number three, choosing released value coverage when your items are worth more than 60 cents per pound per article. Although damages are usually rare, it's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to moving your items. When you know your valuables are worth more than 60 cents per pound, save yourself the hassle and go with full value protection. And lastly, action item number four, not notifying your mover in writing about articles of extraordinary value. Without notifying your mover, they will have limited responsibility when it comes to covering these particular items. If you want to be sure to receive the proper coverage, tell them in writing. Now that you know what to avoid when it comes to liability coverage and the two options that are available to you, you can make smarter decisions when it comes to protecting your possessions throughout your move. Thanks for watching. With North American TV, I'm Justin Umtham wishing you a safe and easy move.